tears may fall, my song will rise, my song will rise to you. My heart may fail, my song will rise, my song will rise to you. While there's breath in my life.
It's good to see you, although I don't see you. I wish I could see you. And you can see me. Anyway, it's good to see you. Um, I hope you're having a great um, week, and I hope you're enjoying this time where you're able to spend with your family, and you're still able to be alone with the Lord and, and draw near to Him as a family. I think that's awesome. I uh, hope you had a awesome Easter and that you um, you know you were able to celebrate and reflect on what he did for you and what he paid for and um, so I'm gonna pray right now I'm excited I I want to share with you some some things I feel like God is speaking through this time and uh, just what he's doing in my heart so Father, I just come to you right now, Father, and I, I thank you for, I thank you for who you are, and I thank you for the relationship that you have with us, and that you have paid for, and that you weren't, uh, you weren't selfish in, in your life towards us, God, that you, you gave it all, and that you, you made a way for us to, to have access to the Father, just like you did, Father. And uh, God, we thank you for for all these things, Lord. And I just pray that the revelation of Jesus and the revelation of the Word of God would, would just fill each home and each heart today. And God, even me, that you would even bring more, a deeper, uh, loving revelation of who you are, and that we have this awesome revel, uh, this awesome um, intimate relationship with each other, God. We thank you for that in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Okay. Well, I just wanted to uh, kind of reflect a little bit about you know this. Uh, it was the re resurrection that we just celebrated the resurrection of Jesus and um, and just looking into some of the things that happened right after that resurrection, you know, right and during that time. So I, I wanted you to go to John 20. Um, John 20, and we're going to go from 11 to 16. So what we're talking about here is how Mary and the other Mary, which I believe was Jesus' mother, because uh, her son Joseph was there, and uh, James, the mother of James. So I believe that was Jesus' mother, anyway. So they went to the, the tomb, and anyway, let's read this here. John 20, 11 said, But Mary stood outside by the tomb weeping. As she wept, she stooped down and looked into the tomb and, and saw two angels in white sitting, one at the head and the other at the feet, where the body of Jesus had lain. Now, of course, you know, they went to anoint his body and they found the tomb open and there was, there was angels there. And um, so on 13 it says, then they said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? And these are the angels speaking to her. She said to them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. So where did they put Jesus? Now when she had said this, she turned around and she saw Jesus standing there and did not know that it was Jesus. And Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? And she, supposing him to be the gardener, said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where, where you have laid him, and I will take him away. And then, okay, Jesus said to her, Mary. And she turned and said to him, Rabboni, Rabboni, or Rabboni, which means teacher, teacher, and uh, so this is the thing. This is the thing that 
that stood out to me was that that she didn't recognize Jesus until he spoke her name, Mary. And when we talk about that, we think about that, we think about their relationship. We think about how they were connected and, and what had happened in Mary's life to um, draw near like that, you know. So, first of all, Mary, you know, she was the one that was caught in adultery. She was the one who Jesus defended and um, he, he said, go and sin no more. There were seven demons cast out of Mary. She was, uh, I guess, demonized as well. And, you know, that's... You can look at Mary and you can look at us and you can see that we had... If, if you had a previous life of before you got born again and you were you were into the worldly things, you would probably be demon-possessed too, or at least demonly inspired to do things, you know. Anyway, not that she was so possessed, but she was cat she was set free. She was set free when from Jesus. And this was part of her relationship. She was she was removed from, from being held in bondage. She was set free. The captive was set free. She was caught in adultery and and she was released from from the penalty of adultery, which was to have her to die, you know, it was a sin that was was going to be justified by stoning. And they wanted to stone her. You know, and this is this was the thing that she was showed mercy. She was showed mercy and and this is the thing that that we need to uh, understand that we have been shown mercy. And 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 the reason why when Jesus spoke her name she could hear his voice. His her name was Mary and and because of that she knew his voice and, and when he said Mary you know, she saw her brother raised from the dead. Um, when Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead, that was Mary's brother. And um, then you can think about the time that she was, they, that Jesus was kicking back at Lazarus' house, Simon the leper's house, and um, they all lived there. And he was, he just went over there and he was sat down and, and Mary came and, and she had her alabaster jar and she broke it and she poured it out on him and um, over his head and over his feet and she wept and were tears, you know, she just had this love, this, this relationship that she could totally recognize and she was the first one, you know, the first one that Jesus revealed himself to was because she was she had this intimate relationship with Jesus. You know, she was willing to lay it all down. She was willing to not care about, you know, true worship is a point where we're walking in a place where we don't care what other people think of us, but we're willing to declare His name. We're willing to praise Him in the midst, regardless. It's not a self-focus. It's a totally... Like, you know, I'm willing to be a living sacrifice for you. And uh, I love this about that. Uh, when I think about, about Mary having that, that relationship. Um, so the next, the next ones I want to talk about is the other two disciples. After, after Mary and, and the Mary, other Mary and the other women went back and told the disciples about about this encounter with the angels and that the tomb was empty and that that she saw Jesus and they went and told other disciples and the other disciples didn't believe they were like you know yeah right you know so anyway two of them they were on the road to Emmaus and uh, Cleopas was one of them he was one of the disciples that was was named. The other one wasn't named. It was two of them anyway. Luke 24, 25 to 27. I'm not going to read the whole story because what happened was they were on their way to Emmaus and 
all of a sudden, as they were walking, Jesus kind of joined in, in with them. And they were walking along and they were talking about, you know, see, they didn't recognize Jesus because he, he didn't um, reveal himself. And I don't know what he, he just didn't look like Jesus or what. I don't understand. But their, their perception wasn't that he was Jesus. And they were telling him about, you know, what had happened in Jerusalem just recently and how Jesus, who they thought was, was going to redeem Israel and um, that he was going to uh, become what they thought was going to be the, when the Messiah came back that he was going to redeem Israel. And, and so he was walking with them. And um, anyway, so here we are. Foolish ones and slow of heart to believe in all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not the Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? And beginning, and beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. Then they drew near the village where they were going, and he indicated that he would have gone farther. In other words, Jesus was kind of just going away. He was going to head on down the road, and they, but they constrained him, saying, Abide with us, you know, uh, stay with us, for it is towards evening, and the day is far spent. And he went in to stay with them. So now it came to pass, as he sat at the table with them, that he took bread, he blessed it, and he broke it, and gave it to them. You know, and then their eyes were opened, that they knew him, and he vanished from their sight. So, what I get out of this is, first of all, they they could have let Jesus just walk by. But, you know, that they were working out of compassion. They were like uh, having mercy on this man that was with them, and they were opening their doors to him. And they said, come on in, stay with us. And they were going to break bread together. So, here's the thing that, that really... Um, sticks out to me is that they did not recognize him until he broke the bread and you know so many times jesus with with his disciples would break bless the bread and then he would break it and he had just broken his life he had just been the bread that was broken for them and and this is the place where we can find revelation is when we come to the foot of the cross and we we realize that Jesus broke his body for us and and we can commune in that place that place of mercy where we are being forgiven where we are being healed where we are being empowered by his grace this is the grace of God and this is the time and even so many times he did this he broke he, he, he multiplied the fish and he broke the bread and he fed the multitudes. And this is what he did with his body. He broke the bread, he fed the multitudes. And this is where they recognized him. And then when they recognized him, he vanished and they ran back to their, their, the rest of the apostles who didn't believe and probably still didn't believe until that same day when Jesus showed up in the midst of them and he revealed himself to them and, and, and Thomas who had not even believed after all the testimonies Jesus said Thomas cast your, your hand in my side and, and, and look at the holes in my hands you know and, and he finally believed and he said, blessed is he who believes who had not been, had, had, who has not seen the holes in my hands and the, and the, the um, holes in my side. Blessed is he who believes. So this is what we need to do is 
is to believe in um, so I want to you know talk about there's one other place that that I, I want to talk about and that's when you know Peter and John they after after the ascension after the Holy Spirit fell and Peter and John they were uh, walking in to the temple and and there was a man who was um, you know he was paralyzed since he was born and and he had and they did an amazing miracle they asked him the, the man asked him for money and he said money we don't have but what we do have we will give to you and this guy got up he helped him up and he got up and he was praising God and and then all the Pharisees and the and Sadducees or whatever was in there the the high priests and all of them they they saw this and and Peter and John were out talking to the people and saying you know it wasn't don't look at us as we are anything special it's not us by our righteousness or anything that this man is healed but it was because of Jesus because the name of Jesus who you crucified is why this man is is healed today and and then the Pharisees and or the the high priests and all these people who had put Jesus on the cross they were like you know how could how could they um, how could you know these untrained men these untrained and normal men how could they have such boldness and such courage and and be uh, you know so they marveled when they realized that these people had been with Jesus they had spent time with him there was a place of intimacy where they were able to flow from and that's that's what we're called to do you know and so I just want to go to Beatitudes and this is the first one and I feel like this is a big part this is a big part of us you know is 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 where we're we become well, it says blessed are the poor in spirit it's Matthew 5 3 you know and I love the Beatitudes and each one of them is a great study you know each one of the Beatitudes and they all seem to connect to each other but this one is the one that stands out to me blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven you know so so what happens when you believe when you get a hold of a true belief and you're you're humbled you're humbled when you come in humility and you're opening yourself up to hearing God's voice you're opening yourself up to knowing him so this is the thing is is walking in a place of humility because if we have pride it's hard our eyes are blinded those are the re very reasons why the Pharisees could not see Jesus they could not accept it because they had pride and they wanted it to be about them you know and their how good they were you know and this difference is humility says Jesus is good pride says I'm good there's a difference and so uh, blessed are the poor in spirit you know and I think poor in spirit covers quite a few things you know um, it, it, it recognizes it recognizes God it it helps us to to uh, be a living sacrifice it's a true worship it's a place of of honoring God and not us and and it's a place of of saying that I don't know it all and I'm gonna listen to you I'm gonna hear what you have to say you know that's what I think um, blessed are the poor in spirit because we're not prideful we're not um, trying to get gain this credit for ourselves and I see that as uh, a big point in rev in recognizing Jesus or or being in relationship with him is that we need to walk in a place of, of humility so I say if God is for you who can be against you and in this time right now we need to walk in a place of humility we need to walk in a place of trust you know we need to know that God is is there he was there 
and all the promises that were foretold about him came to pass. And you know, we need to stay in, in tune with that. You know, because what happens when we start seeing the copper prices going down or, or the stocks going down and, and uh, just a lot of fear and the world talking, all this stuff is what's going to happen to our economy, what's going to happen to me, you know, where am I going to get money to pay for my house payment, where's my money going to come from to pay for this new truck I got, you know. And uh, we can live that way and, 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 and go right along with all this fear that's out there that's being taught to everybody. But if we would just get a hold of, of Jesus and spend that time with Him. I had a wonderful time in prayer. Actually, it was yesterday morning when we woke up, couldn't sleep. At like 2.30 in the morning, we went and prayed for like two hours. And I'll tell you, man, it was just amazing. I just, just love that how the Spirit was there. He was just waiting for us to recognize Him, inviting Him into our house, you know, and, and making time. Making time for Him is so important. You know, we can make time and listen to the, the news, you know, I want to hear what's going on, but what's going on with Jesus, you know? We got to make time for Him. We need to lay down some of our idols and, and get in a place of worship. And that's true worship is prayer. And, and supplication and and also you know just exalting him over all the problems whenever there's something in our life that that gives us fear or gives us um, you know like the giant had control of Israel and and they stood up because of one man's faith in God one one man's relationship with Jesus and just change the whole circumstance. So this is the thing I would say, is that we would turn our hearts to Him, and we would put our focus on Him, and then we would be the answer, and not, and not be one of the, the fearful who are uh, agreeing with all the negativity, and all the, the doubt, and all the, the hopelessness, that we would, we would be the ones that would step up and say, I know my God, and He is with me. And, you know, I'm, there's no weapon formed against you that can prosper. You know, and, and we just need to stand in that place where the promises are real in us. And just believe that, you know, trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not on your own understanding in all your ways acknowledge him acknowledging him is saying that i know he's here with me and i'll tell you what if you got that revelation that he's here with you you're not going to want to get you know and start doing something that's wrong because you know what uh he's here with me acknowledge him you know and and so because he never leaves you nor forsake you amen well, I'm going to pray for you. I uh, probably have more stuff, but I can't go through that <laughs> this way. So I'm just going to pray. Father God, I just thank you for, for the church. I thank you for those who are outside the church looking in. And I pray, God, that you would draw them to yourself, God, because you paid a costly price. You paid such a costly price to be uh, in relationship with us. That we, we could rest in, in the finished work of Christ. And I thank you, Father. I thank you that you broke the bread for us. You broke, you crushed the bread for us. That we could, we could have the bread of life, which is, is you. Which is a relationship with you. And it's a daily bread. He takes care of our needs. And this bread is the bread of life. And I just thank you for it, God. I pray that those who don't know you would turn their hearts to you today, that they would seek after you, that they would find that peace and find that rest, because this is the true bread. This is the true thing that we need that keeps us alive, is that connection with Jesus, connection to heaven through Jesus. And I just pray the blood of Jesus over your, your minds and, and, and I pray that God would, 
would visit you and 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 I pray father that in agreement to all of your prayers for your loved ones that you would that the door of revelation the doors of heaven would be opened up to them and and Lord we just we thank you for all you have done for us God in Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. Amen.